Hello, Professor Bright here. Welcome back to Sunless Skies Early Access, where last episode, everyone disappeared from Hybris. Every single citizen is gone. And all we found was that they might have been putting on a play and something about wizards of glass and a broken mirror. So we're suspecting that it's um, either something to do with the red science or something to do with I guess dream? Eh, kind of. The mirror marshes. Which, uh... Well! That's unpleasant for everybody involved. I suspect it was anyway. Still, we need to take this pernickety factor over to some sort of inconceivable carnival. And then get a magician there and bring him back to Hybris, presumably. So we're gonna keep an eye out for her too ports we've never seen. The Inconceivable Circus. It belonged to somebody, but I... Again, names are not my specialty. And also, of course, for Stainrod Nature Reserve. But in the short term, we're going to be going to Titania and then New Winchester. Or Titania Port Avon New Winchester? No, because Port Avon, nobody likes me there. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. I have an abundance of fuel. I actually probably could do to clear up this little space on the lower left. In fact, I think that's what we do. I do have to eventually get to New Winchester turn on port reports, and I want to go to Titania just to check on things there and make sure that I have more than one port report, because <laughs> giving in just one, it's, uh, it's not good. It got us killed. So, yeah. Also, as soon as we get down to- oh, hey! You look threatening. Sorry, what? Oh, the Winchester War. Yes, unfortunately, this is a placeholder, so... Bye. Hi, yes, yes, yes. Don't worry. You'll be dead in due time. Oh, nope, that's not the way I wanted to go. That's also not the weapon I wanted to fire at you. Okay, come on, boy. There we go. Some fancy maneuvers here. Uh, you were a marauder. Okay. Um. Kind of want both. We'll go with, um. Explore the captain's cabin. The marauders are rarely democratic. Captain rules by strength and claims the best of their own keep. Best for their own keep, rather. Oh, delightful. More salon stewed gossip. The cabin door did not survive the onset of your guns, nor did the captain. You have to tread carefully. The carpet will not be saved. A few scorched documents sit on the bronze wood desk. Would like the bronze wood, but apparently we can't salvage that. They make for interesting reading. Apparently London had need of a few brave captains willing to bring fire to the tackities. You would not have expected the signatories of the orders. Good to know. Of course, I don't know any of the major players in London, because we've never gone to Albion, but... Eh. Minor details. Minor, minor details. Let's head south and see what we find. Oh. Oh, supplies. Also, I probably didn't need to send out that bat, but... Oh, well, I did it anyway. Probably just found... Yeah, okay. It's either Stainrod Nature Reserve or that... Oh, you disappeared on me, you son of a bitch. They're just a tad too fast for me, and that's really annoying. Anyway, no, it's the um, place with the expedition that got us killed, I think. We'll see. Might as well get the port report at the very least. And then we'll go to Titania or somewhere else. Sure, would have been nice to have gotten that little cantankery, but... Oh, well. Can't have everything. And it's fine. Hmm. Sigh of slight annoyance. He's kind of annoying how everything's just that little bit faster than you are. Or so much... Yeah, nope, 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 nope. Okay. At least so close to... Oh, you look new. But we'll see. Good. 
I was hopeful that was bridge. No, 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 no. Mm. Come on. Get to where you belong. Yes, lead beater and stain rods nature reserve. Hello, place I've been very curious about for a while now. Ever since that one guy just exploded into hair. LNS Loading Bay. LNS is an elderly London company, the custodians of the Empire's first supernal nature reserve. To find work with them, head for Capabilities Cabins. If you'd rather enjoy the reserve, seek the gateway of Albert's Idol. Oh, he's in Prince Albert. Kind of cute. Lead Beater in Stainrod Bay. The concrete bay is for loading and unloading locomotives only. It disappoints tourists who expect to arrive at a scenic waterside. It mainly caters for the workers of the Lead Beater and Stainrod Company who come to collect goods from the laboratories here. Laboratories, you say? Interesting. Uh, well. Recruit an incautious driver. The wreckage is still burning just past the station. I'm in need of work, they say, plaintively. Cool. Damn good engine. They squint at your locomotive. By Jove, I think this could be made to go even faster. Please don't. The heck? Okay. Well, gather a poor report. The reserve is a point of pride for the Empire. The Leadbeater and Stainrod Nature Reserve is a national park maintained at great expense by the company. Scores of researchers come here to study the nature of the reach. Many visitors come here too for a pleasant holiday. Huh. The concrete bay is for... We've already read this. Um, was there nothing there? Sorry, I was slightly distracted by a sound from outside. Anyway. I know, I know, I'm professional. Converse with our fellow captains. What brings them out this way? For a few, it's the work provided by Leadbeater and Stainrod. For the rest, the reason is the same. They're drawn by the beauty of the reserve. Some are here with tourists from across the Empire. Others are here to give their crews a respite. Others were simply passing by and couldn't resist stopping in. The concrete bay is for... Again, it's the same thing. I'm going to keep rereading that because I assume it was going to drag me onto somewhere else. Anyway, capabilities cabins. A clump of cabins used by Leadbeater and Stainrod's researchers as they plumb and catalog the secrets of the reserve. Enterprising captains may find work for the company here. Hmm. The researchers of the reserve have a number of laboratories scattered among the tourists' cabins. Interesting choice. From here they study the mysteries of the Reach. Read the request to all park goers. A researcher of the reserve has pinned up a call for aid. We want to study the powerful forces of nature and work in the Reach so that we may improve the life of all citizens of the Empire. If you are an intrepid sword and willing to aid our earnest efforts, we are offering a reward for the following. I see you're interested the phlegmatic research has wheeled up behind you. His left leg is red and swollen and propped up. He's flanked by scouts and other scientists. The key to understanding the remarkable principles of growth and cultivation are waiting here in this verdant paradise. We only need the specimens, not for free, of course. If you aid our research, I'll ensure you're properly remunerated. Good day to you. And with that, his party pushes him on and onto his laboratory. Wanted the wings of a chorister bee. Interesting. Oh, and the researchers of the nature reserve toil away in their labs. The phlegmatic researchers identified certain elements, however, which may quicken their progress. Huh. Well, I mean, some of these are things we can do. Um, hybris pus. The weeping sores of Hybris may yield deeper insight into the Verdant Reach. It may hold properties either beneficial or detrimental to the human frame. We intend to find out. And this matter of the wings of a chorister bee? We seek the wings of a chorister bee. What is it that makes them sing when their smaller sisters only buzz? Oh. To determine the cause of their melody, we seek the... Okay. We've received curious reports from certain homesteads about the behavior of ants. Given the reports of the ants circling those soon to die, we consider the creatures apt for study. Well, that's got to be disturbing. Ice from old Tom's well, a most curious phenomenon. The shelves of black ice. Oh. But from whence does it come? What call has the ice to freeze in a place otherwise so warm? Huh. Interesting. 
Uh, what's this about Albert's ideal, though? Oh, hey, we even have a little art. The lead beater in Stainrod Nature Reserve is an immense, untrodden hinterland of the reaches, unreasonably fecund flora and fauna. It's popular with London's more outdoorsy tourists. Into the reserve, the park is filled with birds and flowers, trees and woodland creatures, streams and bumbling insects, and other insidious dangers. Visitors are not allowed to venture too deeply into the reserve without an escort. Hmm, might as well arrange to go on tour. Park guests are forbidden from entering the deeper sections of the reserve alone. At the moment, we only have one we could show you around now, she says. I'm afraid he's our least popular, but he's the only one available. Just a moment, I'll fetch him. Assume that's this guy. Sometime later, she returns with a lean, humbly dressed man. His beard is long and wiry, and his smile reaches his eyes. The romantic ornithologist shakes her hand. Why does this sound familiar? This gentleman, the clerk says, is searching for the mythical bird that takes grains of time from the mother of mountains. He's wasted 10,000 sovereigns on this pointless search. Fuck you, man. Just... Fuck you. The ornithologist maintains his smile and gestures toward the forest path. I'll be glad to tell you of the bird, but first, come. I've just found a new waterfall I'd like to show someone. I want that money, though. Did this... There's just so much I could do with that much money. And you failed at everything. And I bet I'm going to end up being the thing that solves this problem eventually. <sighs> okay. It's fine. The park is filled with birds and flowers, trees and woodland creatures, streams and bumbling insects, and other insidious dangers. Visitors are not allowed to venture too deeply into the reserve without an escort. I'll make conversation if he's not hiking through the wilderness or camping beneath the bough of one of the great trees. He is sat alone in his watchtower, searching for his bird. He offers a slight nod as you enter. Welcome. Tea? Eh, might as well ask about it. He's researching a mythical bird. What is it and why? There are other birds I could study, of course, he says, shrugging. Well, that's not the point. This bird is holy. It's a myth. The bird who takes a grain from the mountain we now ravage for time. Why does it do this? Where does it go? Have we disturbed its divinity? I must know. Curious. Make conversation with the ornithologist again. But what's this about the reserve? How does he find the wilderness? He smiles like a child. It's my home, he says. My church. It's everything that makes me happy. And his fellow researchers? Is he on good terms with the other scientists? The ornithologist tilts his head from side to side. I get on better alone. It's not that I don't enjoy company, but... He scratches his beard. I think it's a difference in philosophy. They want to conquer nature and her secrets. I only want to be a confidant. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, discuss aiding the ornithologist's research. How can you help him discover this mythical bird? Rubs his chin. Now there are a few ways you could help me out. Okay. Only once per captain. Oh, that's just cruel. And I have a 0% chance, so yeah, that's not going to happen. He smokes his pipe as he looks out over the reserve. It's fluttering about somewhere, he says, and one day I'll prove it. I'm, will to, eh. I'm willing to oblige a crewmate to be his helper. If he had another set of eyes searching for the bird, he might find it faster. The romantic ornithologist claps his hands and walks over to a chest of drawers. And they'll be welcomed indeed. I'll make them most at home. Tell me, he says, opening one of the drawers and revealing a tremendous array of pipes. Do they smoke? Does this improve my chances? It does. I see. I see. Well, I do have ten of the useless bastards. Hmm. So let's just uh, send in all my crew. Because they don't actually do anything for me, so I might as well do this when I have a 100% chance. To my knowledge, there's no negative repercussions for this, so... Look for the bird. Where is it? The reserve is silent. The universe is, if it can ever be, at peace. The ornithologist watches one horizon, you watch the other. Through your binoculars, you observe the final moments before the world wakes. The snails on handrails, a rabbit den, its sleepers soon to wake and rush into the world. Clattering of wood breaks the silence. You turn and find the ornithologist standing. His chair knocked over. He crumples to the floor. Blood trickles from his mouth and drips onto the hardwood floor. His eyes are wide enough to take in the whole world. It perched on the window sill, he says, grasping at your hand. 
we watched each other for half a minute before it flew away. Small, just a bowl of feathers. He grips your wrist tight enough to stop the blood flowing to your fingers. You pull away from him and cry for a physic. A nearby ranger hears you and rushes off. Half an hour later, the trembling man is brought into convalescence. I've seen the face of God, he repeats over and over. I've done it. I've done it. Okay, can we talk about how blood trickled out of your mouth and dripped onto the floor when you looked at this thing? Sounds like something that should be in an SCP. Oh, dear. So, how do you feel now, friend? Despite the flies so full of poison, one bite could take your arm. What? Or the flowers which don't mind feeding on you and do try to tempt you into their hungry blossoms or the burrowing things which are never seen without moving the earth beneath you. The world is peaceful here. That doesn't sound peaceful at all. There was an ornithologist once who showed visitors around this part of the reserve. He's recovering from what doctors have deemed brain fever. Okay. Didn't notice that. Well, that's a thing. I'm gonna go ahead and say we did good? Question mark? Not sure. Not sure at all. Well, we're gonna grab some more fuel. Uh, how many sovereigns do we have? We have 65. Sure, we'll buy a crate of supplies for the crew. <laughs> Good job. Alright, well the good news is we found Stainrod. I just want to go to Titania and then New Winchester. Eh, there we go. Kind of annoys me that having less crew doesn't actually affect supplies. But on the other hand, it also doesn't make me go any slower, so, you know. I suppose it's a fair trade-off. I suppose. Actually, question, does that kill me if I run out of crew? Um, you. Yeah, about the crew. Dumber crew, ba -da 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 -da. It doesn't say, okay. So we don't know if losing all our crew does anything. And yeah, the skills are just for events, huh. Oh, that's fair enough. I'm gonna send out one. Yeah, I'll send him out once when I'm a little bit closer to Titania. Nope. I can't tell if you're background or foreground. You're either second layer or third layer. I can't tell, and it's really annoying. Anyway, moving along. That was Stainrod. It wasn't. Eh. It was an alright port. I've been to worse, and the bat found nothing, so I'm going to just assume that pretty much all this is empty space. Or things that the bat wouldn't find. Come on, keep going. Don't stop. Why would you ever stop? This is not that kind of place. Can't remember, can you at least find something to get me some experience? Because I'm almost there. It'd be nice. I just need one more experience point. Or if revealing the map actually provided experience, that would be kind of cool too. But I guess it doesn't. That's unfortunate. Oh well. Still provides little spaces on the map. And presumably each of these little clusters is going to become some type of opportunity later once the map is more populated by discoveries and such. All the little things that they had in earlier. Have there been more dark splotches than before? Because it seems like there might have. I guess maybe not. It's hard to tell. Hello, thing. Oh, hey. You are Tackities, unless I'm much mistaken. But in my case, you're really just food, so. Oh, God. No, no. Fuck. Nope, I'm in the wrong place. God damn it. Nope. Okay, no. 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 Okay. Okay. God damn it. Fuck. 
Well, the good news about this is that I have a little autosave, so... Bye. Ah, that was just poor performance on my part. You make one mistake and get in front of them, and then you're dead. Ah. Or at least if you keep panicking like what I did there, but, uh... Well, moving along. And hey, I'm gonna have more supplies, so that's nice. Hello, bird. Or bat. Bye. Anyway. See you guys uh, when I get to Titania, I guess. Be with you in a moment. Cool, so that's foreground. Anyway, back with you guys a little bit early, because I just realized, apparently, killing monsters gets you more experience. Which I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean, on the one hand, because all these experience requirements are much higher than what fragments were in order to get secrets, I suppose it's good, but at the same time, it means you want to be killing every monster that you see if you can. So... It promotes a more aggressive approach to exploring, which, admittedly, towards the end there, I was kind of aggressive towards everything anyway, so... I mean, I guess it's okay. It just feels weird. But let's get ourselves to Titania real quick, eh? Let's try to, anyway. Come on. Go! Don't... Do not stop. Why are you stopping? <sighs> Swear, cruise control, you're gonna be the death of me. Come on, Posey Park. <laughs> Cute. Hello, I'm here to find out if you've completed the library yet. I expect you haven't. But who knows, I might be surprised. <gasps> ah, wonderful! I am surprised. The gathered titanians resemble a pleasant meadow, though instead of wildflowers blooming from blades of grass, they peek out from strands of hair. You're joined on stage by the efflorescent dandy who is quickly finishing an apple. You're also joined by the sovereign misanthrope, whose smile is so forced it's practically a grimace. He didn't appreciate sharing his British sensibilities with an inferior aesthetic, but was somewhat mollified by the amount of good English history contained in the library's acquisitions. The rhapsodic mayor presents you the ceremonial scissors, Cut the ribbon for the Library of Yore. It's complete. The crowd cheers. They are quickly shushed by the librarians, however. When they open the doors, the crowd rushes in to peruse the stock. The shelves are logs, carved out and stacked tall. Other trees, planted in the library center, store books in their hollows. It's a complete history of the Empire. All books official and unofficial, approved and banned, historical and apocryphal, have found their way onto the shelves. If London were to be wiped from history, leaving behind only this library, it would be possible to relive its past and recreate it in its entirety. Interesting idea. Onward, except I want to really quickly... Yeah, there we go. Get rid of that steam sound. Thank God. The Mayor's Office. Hello. I'm going to write a port report first. Thank you. Uh, just get me the port report. Hmm. Now, the other thing. What is this? The Astral Amphitheater? A pub? Academy of the Bloody Arts. Ooh. Ooh, tempting. Tempting. But which side would this... Uh... Hmm. Hmm, he says. Hmm. I don't know what uh, what I would want. Hmm. Well, let's read through them real quick. <clears throat> the Imperial Ballroom. It would be a mirrored room with a spiraling wooden floor and a ceiling decorated with constellations. The Celestials shall spin around the room, tracing the arc of stars with their steps. Or the Saturnine Theater, an intimate setting where the spectators may see all the great works of tragedy, 
This is assuming the nocturnal architect intends to install lights currently missing from the design. There's an idea there. The acoustics are designed to amplify every nuance of a rhapsode's voice. The seats are designed to be comfortable through the hours of epic poetry readings. The Celestials have even worked in special lighting effects. Hmm. The Palace of Size. The blueprint shows a maze of halls and courtyards with detailed notes of the construction of a veiled enclaves and the precise placement of cushions around pools. A nocturnal initiative to inspire love stories. Ah, yes. And the Empress's Head. This will be no ordinary pub, but the apotheosis of the English drinking house. The sovereigns shall gather here to sing and search for lyrics in the bottoms of their glasses. Or the Academy of the Bloody Arts. If they are to survive, they must learn to wield more than pencils and paintbrushes. Tempting. Hmm. I'm very partial to the Celestials. Don't get me wrong, the Nocturnals are interesting. But eventually the Celestials lead to an observatory. Whereas, if I recall correctly, what was the other option? A light opera house. Or cathedral. Neither of which are particularly interesting to me. So, I suppose what we need to do... Ah. A fair point, we do need stained glass. Tell you what, we're gonna buy this. Thank you very much. One of the many things that we need, in fact. Um... Hmm, before we go exploring the rest of the Reach, though... Let's... Quickly... See what we can do here. Spell in prison in an unlikely hole. Hmm, scarred. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. A scandal, though. No, no, no. Curious about the interlude in red and gold, but what's this unlikely hole? <gasps> ah, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now I think we're going to just go with, um... Let's say Scarred. He came close that day to death. It left its mark. What was it that nearly killed you? A breached pipe. A jet of scalding steam. You spend a week on the brink, trapped in the boiling dreams. The scars are still livid on your skin. Hmm. Or... There's a bullet scar beside your heart. You've learned, since, to be more judicious in your choice of friends. Kinda like that one. Yes. Like the ideas behind there. But, we have to go to elsewhere. Specifically to New Winchester, because... Well, where else are we gonna go? Could go to Port Avon, but they don't like me there. And I want to start from New Winchester next episode. We have places to go things to see elsewhere, and a carnival to find, of all things. So it only seems fitting to drop off Madame Lumiere and, uh, our port reports, of course, and see what else is out there. And perhaps, if I can recall what else we need for the red science matter, hmm. Well, I think I've got it written down somewhere, so that should be fine. Should be just peachy. A little bit to the right. Come on. Angle it just right. Sound of iron and iron. We're home. And the taste of smog. Mmm, delightful place. Hello, Tackety. You appear to be food. Hi. Let's see how that treats you. Come on now. There we are. It's nothing personal, I just need fuel. Must have coke enough to keep them a little longer in the skies. Wonderful. The boiler makes a series of unhappy noises as you approach. Smoke boils from a little makeshift chimney, stripping the paint from the blackened roof. You trust your stoker's counsel to stay back. Once you've returned after a spot of tea, the boiler is quite still. The smoking remains of a creature lodging inside the boiler have quite cooled, but the coals are still serviceable. I have several questions, but okay, we're going. Onward to elsewhere. 
ideally just a little bit further. Come, come, come. Places to go, things to see. Oh, I didn't actually check out the Library of Yore while I was there. Ah, bugger it. We're eventually going to have to go back to Lustrum anyway, so we'll worry about that then. In the meantime, Victory Hall, you're more my type of people. She listens with a scowl. Well, I'd rather know than not, I suppose. I think you bring this to me rather than the bloody stovepipes. I'll arrange a gratuity. Ah, uh, I suspect that I'm going to have to actually toss off some of this. Yeah, how does this work? Because I don't think I have space for all that. Twelve of ten. Yeah, I don't have space for all this. Oh well. Is there a place I can just toss? Can I at least get some money for it? Like... Do I have any options here? Looks an awful lot like I don't. Well... This is unfortunate. Well, we'll see what's going on. How many sovereigns do I have again? God, I hate that. 115. Oh, okay. We're almost there for the... Actually expanding our... Hello. Expanding our hold. Ah, uh, yes, the news. Oh. The Assembly runs a new Winchester from Victory Hall and seeks to strengthen its hand in the Reach. London's proxy, the Windward Company, however, maintained a considerable presence in the Reach. Although New Winchester is still neutral ground, tensions are mounting within and without the port. Tensions mount in the Gulf of Gloam, as the stalled Tackety Scout refuses any attempt at rescue by patrolling Windward Company engines. The captain has called in aid from a Tackety contingent on maneuvers near Trader's Wood, which the Windward Commander is unwilling to let approach. Bloodshed is expected imminently. Uh Oh well, that's unfortunate. Also doesn't really affect us right now, so moving along. Uh pff, that's a little expensive for my tastes. I drop off Madame Lumiere. She's eager to get back to work. She gives you a brisk handshake as she departs your locomotive. Better accommodation than I'm used to. Now I have a premiere to plan. You're invited, of course. It'll be next week, assuming I haven't keeled over. She bustles off into the smog of New Winchester. Your squabby complains that it's going to take weeks to get the spores out of her berth. Oh. That might not be good. Oh well. Any potential recruits, by any chance? Huh. Well... Why not? <laughs> they stumble aboard, blinking away the fog. Core, they say. Beds. I know. Astounding. But search for the amenable host's identity. A titan of industry? Those are rare outside of Albion. The initial search is fruitless. People giggle at the antiquated fashion on display in the daguerreotype, the tilt of the jaw, the unfortunate arrangement of the hair. But the proprietor of the round table seems to recognize the face. Oh yeah, right, Saudi was. She holds the locket up to catch the falling starlight through the round window in the roof. Wanted to open a factory here a few years back. Something went wrong and there was a workers' revolt. The flags of the trade units could be seen from here to the sanatorium. Not been seen since. Huh. Nothing definitively conclusive here. Okay, we'll look elsewhere. Lustrum and elsewhere, if I recall correctly. Which does give us an excuse to go. I was afraid of that. I guess it'll be the fuel. Well then. Sad when you have to disappear a bunch of fuel, but... Oh well, nothing for it. Next episode, I believe our best bet actually is to just go north. To Port Prosper. Because I really want to improve our hull... Or hull. Hold situation. Just so I can have more fuel on hand at all times. Because I feel like that would be... It would make everybody feel safer. And more importantly, 
make me feel safer, which is really the only important thing in this little matter, if you don't mind me saying. Uh, but for now, thank you for your time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly, and I shall see you all soon.